Hello, John Rhodes here and welcome back. Big hello to all my subscribers and for those of you that have just subscribed, thank you very much. If you haven't, why not do it now? Many of you have been sending me requests for videos and I've made a very long list and I will work my way through them gradually. So if you keep watching, stay subscribed, then you may see your request coming up soon. This current video kind of stems from a hands-on day that I did with some FD dentists here in the UK. And lots of them were having trouble cutting access cavities without risking perforation. So I've made two videos. The first one is about access cavity preparation in a central incisor where there's a very sclerosed root canal. The second video will be about molar access when there's virtually no pulp space. So the roof of the pulp and the floor of the pulp are almost touching. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned and I'll see you again soon. Here is the preoperative radiograph of the maxillary left central incisor. There's a lateral radiolucency and the root canal is very sclerosed. An attempt had been made to carry out root canal treatment, but the dentist had been unable to locate the root canal. So when cutting an access cavity in a central incisor like this, you have to take a few factors into account. Firstly, the position of the access cavity. It really needs to be up near the incisal edge to get straight line access. You also need to visualize both the angulation of the tooth as you see it in the mouth, and also whether it's proclined or retroclined to avoid perforation the buccal or lingual wall. So here you can see that I've isolated the tooth with rubber dam, and I'm now going to remove the filling that's in the access cavity with a long tapered diamond. So now you can see that the access cavity is nice and small, conservative, but it's probably placed a little too far down the cingulum and ideally you want to extend towards the incisal edge to give you that straight line access. In this case, the practitioner was heading buccally and if they had continued, they would have perforated the buccal wall. Looking under high power, you can see the dark area that is the sclerosed canal, and this is where we need to look for the root canal. In this case, I used LN burrs to remove dentine where it was dark until I found patent root canal. Under high magnification, you can see the little white dot, which is the patent root canal. I'm using an endo explorer just to open up the canal before flaring it with the ProTaper SX instrument. The working length was estimated with an electronic apex later to obtain a consistent zero reading. The canal was then tapered using a Wave 1 Gold small instrument.
Irrigation was carried out in this case with 3% sodium hypochlorite agitated with an endo activator. Here the canal is being dried with matched paper points before being obturated using a vertically compacted gutta perca technique. I'm pleased with the final result, there's good apical coronal seal and a little lateral canal pointing to the lateral radiolucency. So in this case we have a similar situation. The maxillary central incisor is heavily restored with composite and a huge access cavity in this case has been created in trying to find the sclerosed root canal. The temporary restoration is simply removed with a long tapered diamond burr. With the temporary restoration removed, we're now looking under high magnification into the axis cavity and we can see two layers of dentine, a dark layer where the sclerosed root canal lies and a lighter layer which is the wall. I'll be using a combination of LN Burr and the StarTex 3 ultrasonic tip to remove sclerosed dentine and locate the orifice of the root canal. Here I'm using a micro explorer to confirm that I've located the orifice of the root canal. Once I've located the orifice, I can then taper this, confirm the working length and finish prepping with the Wave 1 Gold Instruments. So once the orifice had been located, it was a simple matter of flaring, establishing the working length with an electronic apex locator, and then completing preparation with Wave 1 Gold files. It was quite interesting because the preoperative radiograph looked like the canal was very sclerosed. However, once I got into it, it was a lot larger than anticipated, and I prepped the canals up to a large Wave 1 Gold instrument. This is not an uncommon finding, and sometimes you can be pleasantly surprised. In this case I'm going to place a fiberglass post and so I'm prepping the post hole first with the Gates Glidden Burr to create a pilot channel and then with the tapered post drill. After disinfecting with 3% sodium hypochlorite, 
The root canal is then dried, obturated with vertically compacted gutta perca. The post base and coronal part of the tooth etched with phosphoric acid and then the post bonded using a dual cure composite. I restored the rest of the access cavity with composite also. So my final radiograph shows a good homogeneous seal from apical to coronal. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that presentation. Stay tuned because there's many more exciting cases in the pipeline. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And above all, enjoy your endo.